Hello everyone! Today we will be discussing the mitochondria. Let's start with a brief introduction. Mitochondria are intracellular organelles found in almost all human cells. Mitochondria are thought to be derived from aerobic bacteria that invaded the proto-eukaryotic cell more than a billion years ago, and lived in a symbiotic relationship with it, exchanging energy in the form of adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, for residents. However, this endosymbiotic hypothesis is not universally accepted, and has been challenged. Each human cell contains on average hundreds to thousands of mitochondria. The exception is mature red blood cells, which rely exclusively on anaerobic metabolism and contain no mitochondria. Although mitochondria were originally represented as individual, isolated organelles, it is now recognized that mitochondria form a dynamic connected network, also called a reticulum or a syncytium. As zygote mitochondria are derived from the ovum, their inheritance is maternal. Now let's look at some mitochondrial compartments. Mitochondria have four main compartments. The outer membrane, which is permeable to certain ions and small molecules. The intermembrane space, which has a composition similar to that of cytosol. The inner membrane, in which respiratory chain proteins are found. By the way, the inner membrane is folded into multiple cristae, allowing for large surface areas. And the matrix, or the inner part of the mitochondrion, where most of the metabolic reactions take place. The mitochondrial DNA is found within DNA protein complexes, called nucleoids, in the mitochondrial matrix. Now, let's discuss some functions of the mitochondria. Mitochondria are intercellular organelles that are essential for aerobic metabolism and energy production through oxidative phosphorylation, which is accomplished by the respiratory chain. Mitochondria are involved in several other metabolic pathways, including beta-oxidation, the Krebs cycle, and synthesis of iron-sulfur clusters. In addition, mitochondria maintain, replicate, and transcribe their own DNA and translate messenger RNA, or mRNA, into protein. The import and assembly of proteins is another important mitochondrial function, since most proteins that the mitochondria require are encoded by nuclear DNA and translated in the cytosol. Specifically, human mitochondrial DNA is a double-stranded circular molecule containing approximately 16,500 base pairs, compared with over a billion in nuclear DNA. It codes for 13 protein subunits that are associated with proteins encoded by nuclear genes to form four enzyme complexes, plus two ribosomal and 22 transfer RNAs that are needed for protein production by the intramitochondrial ribosomes. The ongoing remodeling of the mitochondrial network is also a function of the mitochondria. Additional roles of the mitochondria include being active in apoptosis, production of reaction oxygen species, calcium homeostasis, maintenance of the lipid membrane, and immunity have been described. Mitochondria have an ineffective DNA repair system, and the mutation rate for the mitochondrial DNA is over 10 times the rate for nuclear DNA. Here are some mitochondrial markers. For the inner membrane, the markers are ATP synthase and succinate dehydrogenase. For the intermembrane space, the markers are creatine kinase and adenyl kinase. The matrix markers are glutamate dehydrogenase, pyruvate dehydrogenase, and enzymes of the TCA cycle and oxidation of fatty acids. But you may ask, how is protein imported into the mitochondria? Well, there are two ways. There is TOM, translocase of the outer membrane, and TIM, translocase of the inner membrane. Both are import receptors and translocators. Protein passes through TOM and enters intermembrane space, then passes through TIM to enter the matrix.
The TOM-TIM alignment is also an important topic. Research suggests that the TIM tethers to the outer membrane and diffuses laterally until it comes in contact with the TOM, or the presequence complex. Protein can enter the matrix in an energy-dependent manner. The presequence is cleaved by peptidase, and chaperones assist in folding. Protein's transmembrane domain can diffuse laterally out of TIM and embed in inner membranes. Now, you might hear all of this and think, well, where's the clinical link? Well, let's explore that. In particular, let's look at neurodegenerative disorders. These are often caused by defects in translocases. Genetic disorders in TIM production results in deafness and dystonia. Now let's discuss symbiogenesis. The DNA and ribosomes of the mitochondria and prokaryotes have many similarities. The discovery of this fact resulted in the endosymbiotic theory of mitochondrial evolution, which is that mitochondria were originally independent prokaryotic bacteria with the special ability to produce energy through oxidative phosphorylation, and were eventually engulfed by eukaryotic cells. As a result, the prokaryotic cells lost part of their DNA and their ability to live independently, while the eukaryotic host cell became dependent on the energy produced by the incorporated bacterium. Let's look at some mitochondrial myopathies. Mitochondrial myopathies are the group of disorders characterized by an impaired energy production in the form of ATP that mainly affects organs with a high energy demand, such as the brain. These are extremely rare and the prevalence is a ratio of about 13 to every 100,000. One of these myopathies is etiology. These are caused by mutations and or defects in the mitochondrial DNA, which are maternally inherited. Children of an affected mother will likewise be affected. The genetic expression is variable due to heteroplasmy. Heteroplasmy is the heterogeneity of the mitochondrial DNA within a cell. It's caused by selective distribution of mitochondria with mutated DNA, and can result in variable expression of diseases that follow mitochondrial inheritance. Another myopathy is pathophysiology. These are mutations and or defects in the mitochondrial DNA that lead to impaired oxidative phosphorylation, which therein causes a decreased production of ATP, which thus creates an increased glycolysis, which then causes an excessive production of pyruvate, which finally leads to an accumulation of lactate and alanine. Organs with a high energy requirement, such as the retina, brain, inner ear, skeletal cardiac muscles, or others, are particularly affected. Some common clinical features include commonly external ophthalmoplegia, ptosis, and or exertion muscle weakness. Some diagnostics are genetic studies, including mitochondrial DNA, and muscle biopsy. Immunohistochemistry typically shows ragged red fibers, which are caused by subsarcolemal and intromyofibrillar accumulation of defective mitochondria in muscles, or mitochondria stain red. Laboratory studies for this include normal CK and elevated lactate and alanine in serum, urine, and or CSF. The treatment is mainly supportive. Now let's discuss some subtypes of mitochondrial myopathies. The first is MELAS. It is characterized by mitochondrial encephalomyopathy, lactic acidosis, and recurring stroke-like episodes. Other findings include muscle weakness and tonic-clonic seizures. The next subtype is MERRF. This is characterized by myoclinic epilepsy with ragged red fibers. We do know the cause. There is a point mutation of the 8,344th base pair of mitochondrial DNA in approximately 80% of cases, specifically in the mitochondrial MTTK gene. This leads to the destruction of important proteins involved in oxidative phosphorylation. Other findings include generalized seizures, cerebellar ataxia, and dementia. 
The third and final subtype is CPEO. This is characterized by chronic progressive external ophthalmoplegia with bilateral ptosis. Kern's Sayer syndrome is characterized by ophthalmoplegia and retinous pigmentosa, impaired electrical activity of the heart, especially the AV block, and LHON, Leber Hereditary Optic Neuropathy. Let's now discuss some of the epidemiology. This most commonly occurs in teenagers and young adults, with the male-to-female ratio being about 3 to 1. The cause is cellular death in the optic nerve neurons, and clinical features are painless acute or subacute bilateral vision loss, which is usually irreversible. There is also Lee syndrome. The clinical features of Lee syndrome include vomiting, diarrhea, dysphagia, failure to thrive, hypotonia, dystonia, ataxia, rapidly progressive psychomotor regression, ophthalmoparesis, nystagmus, and optic atrophy. Death usually occurs within two to three years due to respiratory failure.